Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about how to create a package or a plan for your program, I guess, for your patients and whether that is the right thing for you to do. So before I give you the how-to or what I'm thinking, I have to be full disclosure. You may have heard me before talk about how much I don't like them. I don't like packages, plans, you know, big, they come in and at your initial appointment or you're online, you know, you're going to work with me for X number of months and it's a big dollar amount. I've never been a huge fan. And the reason that I've not been a huge fan is for me, I wanted to feel like I could really connect with the person. I wanted to feel like it would just had more integrity for me, authenticity probably for me. I just wanted to make sure that I could really felt like I was connecting with the person. And I just generally liked the fee for service model. You know, you come in, you have, you know, your fee, you get your supplements or to pay for your tests, whatever it is, and off we go. I really liked the fact that the cash flow was really consistent with a fee for service model. So, you know, getting a big chunk up front and then knowing that you're going to work with a patient for like six months, right? And then at the end of six months, your cash flow is crappy and you still have to like provide service or whatever. I didn't like that. The bad part is that I always felt like they could just leave if they wanted to. Like the con was that there was no sticky factor. I'll put it that way. There was no sticky factor. Like they could just kind of like ghost me if they wanted to. And it seemed like in some circumstances that maybe like a treatment program or a package kind of thing might be a better option, but I just never really put it together. And if I did, it was just on a kind of a case by case basis until now. Now I'm sort of rethinking this and here's why. Recently, I have noticed and I've had multiple practitioners that I personally work with and coach in their businesses, I've had multiple people come to me and say that they've noticed that patients are doing a few things different right now. One of the things that they have noticed, and I've noticed the same thing, and that is that patients are coming in and they're getting their thing fixed, whatever the thing is, whether it's back pain, your chiropractor, or acupuncture, or they're, you know, getting their digestion fixed or they're pooping now, they're getting their thing fixed and then they go away and they're just ghosting you. They don't come back. And I don't like that. Like when I reach out to you, like if someone comes in, they're all in, they're all on board. We're having a great time. I'm making a difference for them. They're super happy with the results. And then all of a sudden, vamoose and they're gone. Well, that takes time for me, my staff. We're calling, hey, where'd you go? What happened? Are you okay? We've got supplements for you. You reordered them. You didn't pick them up, whatever it is. It takes time and effort for me. And, you know, I don't know the reason that they went away. I mean, maybe they moved or maybe they had a financial hardship or whatever it is. But nonetheless, recently, there's been a little bit more ghosting. I don't know if you've noticed it, but I sure have noticed it. So I'm wondering if something might be shifting. Like, I don't know if it's the economy. I don't know if it's that people feel like they have more options or there's more availability now, supplements online, and they can kind of doctor themselves. I don't know. I don't really know what the reason is. And, you know, we could analyze that all day long. But the point is, maybe it's time to think about doing something differently. So I think I'm talking about this as much for myself as I probably am for you. But I think it might be time to think about this a little bit differently. So before you bag out and you hit click and you think, oh, forget it. I'm not going to listen to her because she's talking about something I don't believe in. Just hear me out. Just listen to what I have to say. And then you can make your decision at the end. And it may or may not be right for you, but let's just talk this through. What I do want to be clear about, though, is that the one thing that I don't like, and I have seen practitioners do this, and I think probably if I was really honest, I think this might be part of what turned me off is that I've seen practitioners use it as an excuse to just jack the crap out of their prices. And I don't like that. That doesn't feel right to me. It's just not right. We need to be profitable because we have a business to run. You know, you can't serve people if you're not profitable. Absolutely. You can tattoo that on the inside of your eyelid, my friend, because you cannot help more people if you don't have the capital to be able to grow. It takes money to make money. It takes capital to grow your business, to invest in a new piece of equipment, to hire that next staff person, to hire someone to help you with your marketing. And if you're not making money, you can't grow. That means you can't impact more people. So we have to be able to make money. We have to be able to be profitable, just like any other business. But that doesn't mean that we have to be greedy. And that's what I don't like about packages. So I'm going to talk about this, creating a program or a package type thing. But first, I want you to know, I'm not talking about being greedy. I'm talking about doing what's right and fair. 
I'm thinking about this. I want to remove the obstacles for them. Like, how can I make it easier for them? Because dropping out and ghosting me isn't helping them because they're not getting the best result. They're not getting my best care. When they drop out, I'm like, I can't help you if you're not here, right? So let's just kind of take a look at some pros and cons with doing a package kind of a, you know, promotional period of time. Like maybe it's three month program or a six month program or something like that. Let's look at some of the pros and cons. Here are the pros. It's nice because you can be very clear about your expectations up front. I would never recommend doing a package. I never have recommended doing any kind of a program or a package without a contract. Now, a contract sounds like a harsh word, but something is a written agreement. How about we call it that? We'll call it an agreement. In that agreement, you are able to be very, very specific about what your expectations are. So for instance, you're very specific about the length of time that you believe it's going to take for them to really get the results they want. Sometimes these are the details that get glossed over in the one-on-one -on -one conversations, or you're having that conversation with the patient, their first appointment, but really that first appointment, they can't remember crap because you were just talking a mile a minute and they don't remember all of it. So they could say, I don't remember you ever saying that. This way there's an agreement. It's something in writing. So you're discussing like the length of time. You're talking about the price. You've established a price. You're listing out what it includes. In other words, what you're going to do and importantly, what you expect them to do in order to get the results. I have some practitioners I work with that'll actually put a guarantee on their program. And if you don't get the results, I'll give you your money back. But they have to prove that they did it. And so it doesn't work for everyone, but there are ways that you can do that. I don't do that because I don't want that person. I don't want the person that's only working with me so they can get a guarantee and then they're going to hose me at the end. I'm not doing it. But for some people, that's okay. So you can write down what you're going to deliver and what the promise is that you're making, but you're also able to really get clear in that agreement what you expect from them. You're going to also get a nice cash injection. This is not what I'm recommending. Okay, just go with me here. Let's just say for ease of math, because I'm doing it on the fly, let's just say that you have a six-month program and it's $10,000, okay? I'm not saying that's what you need to do, but I'm just saying, for example, I would absolutely get 25 to 30% of whatever your fee is up front. So in this example, $2,500 or $3,000 up front, and then maybe they make payments on the rest. Or you spread it out over three months. They make the balance and they pay it out over three months. So a third, a third, and a third. The reason that I wouldn't recommend, I guess this kind of falls in one of the cons, but the reason I wouldn't recommend just setting them up on a monthly is because you've got some hard costs more than likely up front. Supplements, tests, your time, et cetera. So you need to get some money up front. So you can be clear about that. Here's how the finance part of it works. And when people put that kind of money all at one time on the line, their commitment level is different. Have you noticed that? When you give something away, you know, you give it to someone for free, they're like, meh, I got it for free. I am out. I don't care. But when they have to pay for it, they're all of a sudden pretty dang invested because they've just paid a lot of money to make sure that they want to get the outcome. And the other, I think a pro is, is that we're not nickel and diming them. You know how oh, well, that'll be $320 or this $285 or this one's 500 and whatever dollars because we had to order a stool test for you. They're constantly nickel and dime, nickel and dime, nickel and dime. And I think now, especially now, because we know that, you know, cost of living has gone up. I think now people are, you know, they're being a little bit more careful. And maybe that's why some of this ghosting is happening. I don't know. The last thing that I wrote down and made a note about as far as the pros go is that they're more likely to leave you a great review because you're going to get them results as compared to the patient that comes in is a one and done. They come in, you give them a couple of things to get them pooping again, and then off they go, never to be heard from again. They're not going to leave you a review and reviews are the lifeblood of your business. It just is. If you have, whether you're a brick and mortar or you're virtual, those reviews are essential. So I think there's a lot of pros here to having some kind of a package or program that you can offer them. Now, let's talk about the cons. Here's the cons. These are the ones that I came up with. First of all, one of the cons is that you do have to manage your cash flow. I always say you can't spend what you haven't earned. 
So if they pay you, in my example, let's just say they pay you $10,000 and you look at month number one and let's say it includes $500 supplement credit. So you've paid for those supplements, your wholesale cost on the supplements. You ordered a stool test, you ordered a blood test for them, and that's included. You figured all that out. You've added it in your program and you've got your time, right? A new patient appointment. So if they pay me $10,000, and let's just say in my example that that's $1,500, I've got $1,500 up front, that doesn't mean that I have a whole $10,000 to spend. It means I've got $1,500 that I have earned. In other words, I've done the work for the $1,500. $8,500, in my example, has to go in a separate bank account. And then next month when they come in or they get more supplements or however you have it set up, then you pull money out of that account. You put it back into your operating account because otherwise you're going to be in trouble. I've seen it happen. And that's another reason why I've kind of been like, do I really want to do that? But in this case, now at least, I think I would be willing to take that on as having a little bit extra work on the back end to make it easier for the patient on the front end and through the experience. So that's con number one. Number two. This number two is that it does require some time for you up front to figure out how you want to structure it, right? How do you want to structure it, which I'll get to in a second. You have to figure out what you want to offer, what you want to include, all of that. So it does take a little bit of time and work up front. But once it's done, it's done and you've got it. But that's a, you know, if time's a factor, then it's a con because you could just do a fee for service and take your chances that they're going to ghost you. Number three. And the reason I saved this one for last is because this is my last con. And I really did think hard, but I couldn't think of very many more. This was it. Number three, but I think this is a big one. You, my friend, you listening, you have to feel 100% confident about the value of what you're offering. And you have to state it that way. Meaning, you don't want to sit down with a patient at your new patient appointment or maybe their first follow-up appointment or however you have it structured, and you don't want to say, well, like this is what you don't want to do. Okay, here we go. This is never going to work. You would sit down with the patient and say, well, you know, Elizabeth, it's been a pleasure to have you. I'm excited about helping you. You know, we're going to get your skin all cleared up and really help that digestive system. And it can be expensive. And so if you want, we can do it all at once for whatever price, six, 6000 whatever you decide. Let's say we'll just go with our 10000 With 10000 I know it's really expensive. No, no, friend. You got to come at this like, you know, your stuff. If you come at it and you are like wimpy and waffling around and making excuses and I know it's expensive, how do you know it's expensive? How do you know what their finances are? You don't. No one gave you access to their bank account. You have no idea what they can afford or not afford. You don't know that a parent or a friend, you don't know. Listen to me preach. It's happening right now. I'm going for it. You don't know. So don't pass your money judgment on them. Your job, if you have something like this that you're going to offer, is you say, listen, here's the thing. I've done this before. I know how to get you better. It's going to take us at least six months. What I'd like to do is I'd like to start and know that we're going to work together for six months. Here's the cost for working with six months. That's going to include blank and blank and blank and blank. At about month five, we're going to reevaluate and make sure that you are really happy with your results. But this is not difficult. We are going to get this. I'm 100% confident that we're going to be able to be successful and help your skin and your digestive issues completely resolve. And if we have to change course during the middle, we have the dexterity to be able to do that too. But I got you and this is what it's going to cost. And are you ready? Let's go. Do you see the difference? It doesn't matter to me. If the patient says yes, great. If the patient says no, fine. It might be money. It might be that they don't like the color of my eyes. It might be that they don't like where my office is located. And I don't care. But I know my stuff and I know that I can get the result. So when you're thinking about creating a higher priced kind of a program, you have to be confident about who you are and the transformation that you're going to provide. Because if you missy mouse around and put all your money stuff on them, 
they're going to pick that up and go, well, she doesn't sound very confident. And uh, no, I don't think so. I thought, no, I, no, I'm out. Oh, I'll, I'll check with my husband. I'll let you know, which is code for no. So you got to be really confident and you can have that confidence. I can help you. Like, I'm not kidding you. I'm good at this stuff. I'm really good at this. Do you hear me can be confident? Because I know I am. So if you are like, I don't know, I don't know, schedule a consult with me and I will help you. And we will work through this together. I'll put the link in the show notes. Anyway, okay, now, so there's the pros, there's the cons. Now let's talk super fast about five steps that'll help you get started, okay? If you think, I think maybe I wanna do this or I wanna consider it, just be open to the possibility, that's all. So here they are, five steps. Number one, here's how you create your own treatment or package type program. Number one, I want you to look back over some patients that you have recently worked with about X condition. So you probably have some specialty or something that you know you do well. Maybe you love working with Lyme patients or you are a mold person or you're a menopause person. So we'll pick menopause because I am a menopausal woman. I get it. So let's just pick menopause. All right, you work with menopause and you know how to get their brain back, how to make the hot flashes go away, how to get their skin looking beautiful again and get their libido back or constipation or whatever the symptom is, okay? You know how to do it. And you know that you're so good at it that it usually takes you about three to four months. So you look back in your patient files and you go, okay, you know, Mary, Mary was a menopause patient. How much money did she spend all together over four months or during a period of time before she was better? Okay, there, now you got a dollar amount for Mary. Then you go look at Susan. You're like, oh, how much did Susan spend? Oh, she spent this many, she was in this many times. These were her fee for service, you know, consult with me. And then this is how much she spent on supplements and this is how much we spent on tests. Okay, now you got that number. And then there's, you know, Mary Ann. And then there's the other thing. And you get five or six or 10 people and figure out how long did it take you to get results? And then how much did they pay? And you're going to start to see some patterns. You'll start to see like, oh, they paid me, let's just say, I'll pick a number, $5,000 over four months for supplements. And I don't even know if that's close. So just, again, it's just a number. Don't get hung up. But they paid me X amount of dollars, $5,000 over four months on average, and they got better in four months. Or maybe it's three months, or maybe it's six months, whatever your months are. But pick the thing that you know, if I work with you on this thing, it's going to take X number of time. And you know that your history with patients tells you this is how much they've spent. Once you know that, then you can decide how you want to structure it. So in my example, we'll choose a three-month program for $5,000. Okay, let's just do that. In this three-month program, when they come in, you now know that your patients have spent $5,000 and that's the average. So now you can structure this however you want. You could say, well, I really know that about 50% of the people I do testing on, like let's say saliva testing, and 50% I don't. So you can decide, do you want to include lab tests in your package? You can. Or do you want to include a supplement allowance? It's a little bit more work on the back end to track, but it's doable. And I actually like that idea. It is more work, but I like the idea because you know what it does is it solves that nickel and diming problem, right? Where they come in, oh, $300 today. Oh, it's $285 today. It's $400 today. Stops that whole thing. You can kind of estimate like, okay, everybody's going to get a saliva test, every menopausal patient, and that's X number of dollars, my cost and then X number of dollars of value to them. Like what would they pay for it? Everybody's gonna have to take tribulus or whatever you're gonna give them, adrenal support, whatever your jam is. And then I know that's gonna be the X amount of dollars. So once you know what your history is, how long did it take you and how much did those patients spend? Now you have a baseline for creating your own package, okay? Your own kind of a program. The third thing you wanna know is, so let me just go, number one is, what have you done historically? Like what is the problem that you've solved historically and how long does it take you to solve that problem and how much did it cost in your patient experience? Number two, do you wanna include any supplements or lab tests? You can decide that, it's your call. Number three, what type of resources can you provide for them 
that will help them feel more supported. These are the things that don't cost you much, but they can add a tremendous amount of value for them. And this is where you can make a little bit more money inside your program or package because you're adding in value added things. So it could be things like, I made a list of a bunch of things. Could be, let's say you have like a healthy living video library or something like that, where you've just got a whole bunch of five minute videos where you're talking about all kinds of things like how to make a healthy quiche and how to make your own laundry detergent or how to whatever, right? You've got all the things. You just have this video library. Maybe there's that. Maybe you're going to provide them with a weekly recipe or a meal plan, or you're going to do some kind of a group coaching, like a once a week Zoom call or an in-office meeting. Like doesn't mean they have to come, but it's something that you're providing, right? You invite all the other menopausal women to come and you're going to all meet together in your office once a week. Or if you're virtual, you would do this virtually. Maybe they have access to priority scheduling. In other words, they get first pick. Maybe you have some kind of a weekly accountability call with yourself or a health coach, and that's X amount of value for them. Maybe they have access to other services in your practice. So maybe you know, you have like a body scanner, like a Styku, and there's a link for that too. If you don't know what that is, I have one in my other business and I love that thing. So great. Patients are really sticky. It's a good stick factor in a business. So I'll put a link in the show notes. Maybe you have a sound bed or you have a PEMF mat or you have like a Saluma or red light. You have some kind of, you know, an exercise place or a sound therapy or a dry float bed or you're going to give them some discount, a certain percent off of your chiropractor or acupuncture or whatever service you're providing. See, those are all added benefits to them. And yes, they would have to pay for them. So do you see how that adds the value? But it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you anything. So then add up all of your hard costs. This is number four. Once you know what you want to include, you're going to add up your hard costs for your consultation time, your staff time, you know, all labs, supplements, all that stuff. Add up your hard costs, and then you're going to add up what it would cost them. What's the value to them? So your cost is different than the value to them. And from there, you can determine the price. So number four is add up your hard costs. Number five, add up the value to them, all the things you're doing. And then number six is determine your price. And you should have, that's profit margin to cover your overhead, your leftover profit, pay your staff, all the things. Don't sell yourself short. Don't leave like, you know, you've added it all up and there's an extra hundred dollars in there. Like, come on, friend. You went to school. You learned all this stuff. You're going to change her life. You're going to make her have the best sex life ever. You're going to have her hot flashes resolved. You're going to get her brain back. She's going to be so happy. She's going to lose weight, all the things that you know how to do. And you're going to do that for a hundred dollars? No, I don't think so. Don't do that. So you should be able to make some money at this deal. There's no question about that. And then lastly, you want to create some kind of a new patient funnel. And what I mean by that is how and where and when are you going to present this package or program to them? One of the ways you can do that is to offer them a new patient appointment, have them come in, whether that's just a fee for your time or you include labs or you have some other in-office tests that you do, but you want to like get to know them. Find out if you even like them because sometimes you get a patient and you're like, ah, no, I'm just going to be irritated every time I talk to you because you're whiny or you're complaining or, you know, or you have something going on that I don't know anything about or I'm not comfortable working with or, you know, we just all get those people. It's just like not always the best fit. So when you have a funnel, so to speak, so the patient comes in, you sit down, you chat with them, and you're like, hmm, I like you. I think this could be a good thing. Then great. Then you can say, listen, here's a deal. Here's what I'm recommending. And then you offer your program. And if they say no, fine. They're not rejecting you. They just don't want to buy your car. They just don't want to buy your thing right then. They might have something else. They want to put braces on their dog. That's fine. You can do whatever you feel like you need to do. Fine. It doesn't matter to me. This, this is what, how I do it. And this is how I know that I can get you better. It's going to take me six months or three months or whatever it is, because you want to let them know that you are in it to win it. You're not in this to just do a one-off, like you're going to come in and get your symptom resolved. And then you're going to ghost me. I don't do things that way. And 
I'm just saying you can do it that way and there isn't anything wrong with it. I've done it that way my whole career. But I really am rethinking this now. I'm just being honest with you. Like I'm really rethinking this right now because I think now people are so flighty. They don't want to invest because they're afraid. They're getting burned. They're probably working with other people and getting burned. And so then they come to us and they're with a hairy eyeball like, I don't know, is she going to even be able to help me because, you know, nobody else has helped me. Well, you know, I'm screwed from the beginning. I don't want to do that. I want to be clear about expectations. Let them know what I expect from them, what they can expect from me what this involves, and that we're in this together. Remember, your house, your rules. You can do it however you want, but the goal is that you want them to be 100% happy and you let them know I'm with you every step of the way. To me, I think it feels a lot better now for them because there's so much unrest, you know, unrest with political things, unrest with financial things. And we've got Middle East things going on right now. And We don't know how that's all going to turn out. And I think that having someone to like really be committed and walk beside them when there's all this other uncertainty going on can be incredibly valuable for them. I think that a package where you're basically outlining the terms by which you want to be able to help them in a way that's going to serve them the best, because you always have to keep them in front of you, right? It's not about the money. Yes, you have to get paid for what you do and get paid well, but it's not about the money. It's about helping them get the result that they deserve and that they want. And when you can align what you offer with the desire that they have to get better, then it's going to be a perfect match. So I hope this doesn't make you feel overwhelmed. I think when I decided to do this podcast, I probably did it more for myself because I'm kind of going through my own existential crisis on this conversation. But I wanted to bring you into the conversation. I've been really thinking about this. You know, why would I do this? Why would I not do this? And then I was thinking about you and thinking, well, why might you do it? And why might you not do it? And I think that there's a place for this in your practice. And listen, what's the worst thing that can happen is that you offer it and it doesn't feel congruent to you or you just don't have the right mindset. Like it's just not right. That's okay. Then don't do it anymore no problem. Then go back to your fee for service thing. It's okay. But you have to have a very clear, like you know exactly how the flow is going to work. They're going to come in. They're going to see you as a new patient. You're going to decide. You, you decide. I decide. Do I want to work with you? Hey, I'm the practitioner. You're asking me for help. I get to say yes or no. I'm not so desperate that I'm going to say yes to everybody. That never works out. So you get to decide the terms and then you offer it to them. And what's the worst thing that can happen? They say no. And it might really legitimately be a financial issue. Well, then fine. You can just go back and say, hey, you know, well, listen, let's just for a while, let's just start this, you know, fee for service, kind of like, you know, it's so much for a visit and da, 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 and see if it works. And if they ghost you, well, then they probably wouldn't have stuck around anyway. So just something to consider. Thank you for listening. I really do appreciate it. And if you feel overwhelmed or you need help with your mindset, like, That confidence, you know, confidence being able to say, this is what I do. Here's how I do it. This is why I do it. And this is what I, I would be honored to help you. So you can find the link to schedule a consult with me and you can pick your time, 30 minutes, an hour. I don't care, whatever you want. And I'm happy, happy to walk you through this. If you need help with your fee structure, I get that a lot. People are like, well, I don't think I'm charging enough and I don't know how to set it up. I'm good at being able to do that. So the easiest way for you to do that is just head on over to the show notes for this episode. Go to rondanelson.com forward slash 176, 176, and you'll find a link to schedule with me. And then we'll just chat it up. I'll help you get you kind of pointed in the right direction. And then we can decide from there. If you want to continue working with me, great. If that's enough for you, fine. There you go. Go to rondanelson.com forward slash 176 if you would like some help. But otherwise, think about the whole program package thing because it might just be time to make a little bit of a switch. I'm doing the same thing. So that's it for me. Thanks, friend. Take care. I'll talk to you next week. Hey, hey, wait, wait, before you go, I have something super cool, new and exciting and super fun. And I want you to participate with me. Are you ready? So have you ever listened to the podcast or you've attended one of my seminars and you had like this burning question. 
like a burning question and you thought, I wonder what Rhonda would do, or I wonder what Rhonda would think, or I wonder how Rhonda would handle that. I can tell you, I hear that all the time in my Facebook group, in my consulting that I do with practitioners. They always say, I was laying in bed thinking, what would Rhonda do? So here you go. We have created a special kind of a fun little game that love to have you play. And we are going to do ask Rhonda any question you want. So you can ask me anything. We have a special place or a page that you can go to where you can submit a question. It doesn't matter if the question is clinical or business, either one, I don't care, ask away. I will be collecting all of your questions and I will answer them on an upcoming podcast. So the question asking period is open until December the 10th, 2023. So get busy, start asking. There's no limit. You can ask as many questions as you want and I'll pick the greatest questions, the best questions, the one that I feel like I can provide the most value for, and I will answer them on a podcast. So it might be your fee structure. It might be hiring. It might be you're stuck on a clinical question, like what's the difference between this and this? Whatever it is, just ask away. Here's where you go. Go to rondanelson.com forward slash, are you ready? W-W-R-D. What would Rhonda do. So rondanelson.com forward slash W-W-R-D. Go there, fill out the form, ask your question. And if you have another question, fill out the form again, (laughs) ask the question. You can submit as many as you want. And I can't wait to hear your questions. And I can't wait to answer them on an upcoming podcast. So there you go. rondanelson.com forward slash W-W-R-D. I can't wait to hear them. See you later.